Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna from Hasna's Nat Me now let me give you a little embryological basis of what is happening so firstly let's go back rewind to the time that you were an embryo all right how did the digestive system develop right the digestive system was basically going to develop from this tube called the gut tube all right so basically your entire digestive system all those intestines and the stomach everything was basically the tube gut tube the gut tube itself was divided into three parts all right the foregut the midgut and the hind gut your entire digestive tract will be formed by these parts of the gut all right so all of these three different parts basically they had their own arterial supply their own supply so uh, for instance the abdominal aorta gave the celiac branch for the foregut it gave the superior mesenteric branch for the midgut and the hindgut had its own inferior mesenteric branch just like three siblings in a way you can say there are three siblings now these three siblings as they will grow up they will produce kids of their own and each will have their own kids so similarly the foregut midgut and hindgut have each their own derivatives the foregut becomes your future esophagus stomach duodenum up to the opening of the bile duct next story of the duodenum begins in the midgut the derivatives of the midgut are the duodenum after the opening of the bile duct then the jejunum the ileum the cecum appendix the ascending colon and if you remember this was the ascending colon and then came the transverse colon and then came the descending colon right so the line of demarcation is right here the midgut will develop into the part up to the right thirds of your transverse colon and then the rest of the derivatives are from the hindgut the left third of the transverse colon the descending colon the sigmoid colon and the proximal part of the rectum and what about the distal part of the rectum and anal canal is coming from the anorectal canal that's a story for another day up to now i hope it makes sense now let's talk about what happens in the foregut let's suppose once again you're in embryo and this is your gut tube or right. remember one thing the all of these parts of the gut tube are suspended by their own mesenteries all right everyone has their own mesenteries or fold of peritoneum suspending them within the abdominal cavity and in case of just the foregut there is not just a dorsal but there is also a ventral part of this mesentery all right makes sense so how about i'll take a cross section of this and we view from above what is happening let's suppose this is your entire peritoneum here is your dorsal mesentery and your foregut so your foregut will start to develop into your stomach and your duodenum right so as it is developing let's suppose this is your stomach as it develops there is mesentery behind the stomach and there is a mesentery in front of the stomach since i told you guys fold of peritoneum takes the name of the organ so at that point this part is known as let's suppose this is dorsal this is ventral so the mesentery that is suspending the stomach posteriorly is known as the dorsal mesogastrium mesentery in front is known as the ventral mesogastrium as the embryo grows what happens is another organ starts to develop where in the ventral mesogastrium in this ventral mesogastrium develops your liver and since the liver starts developing it divides your ventral mesogastrium into a ventral part and a dorsal part your ventral part is anterior to the liver is will be known as what we've talked about the defining terms we all know that when the peritoneal fold is connecting an organ to the abdominal wall it is called a ligament therefore this will become the ligaments of the liver like the falciform ligament the triangular ligament or then is the dorsal part of the ventral mesogastrium this will be specialized to form the what the lesser omentum and what did i say that in order to be an omentum what do you have to do to be a large peritoneal fold attached to the stomach so that makes sense that's how the lesser omentum comes into existence now let's talk about the story that is occurring in the dorsal mesogastrium so the dorsal mesogastrium i want you to divide it into a large caudal part all right and a small cranial part 
what does that mean obviously this is we're seeing it in cross section however when it is kept in the body it's probably slanted so there is a cranial part closer to your cranium side and caudal part which is below so the caudal part is larger the caudal part of the dorsal mesogastrium will become what you call the greater omentum as it will get super enlarged and so if this is the stomach this caudal part of the dorsal mesogastrium goes down all the way and comes all the way up it's like a fold and this fold is known as the greater omentum derived from what the caudal part of the dorsal mesogastrium what happens in the cranial part two things happen in the cranial part in the cranial part of the dorsal mesogastrium starts developing your spleen all right when the spleen starts developing suppose here the spleen is developing the spleen will divide the cranial part of the dorsal mesogastrium into a ventral part and a dorsal part all right the ventral part will be known as what did i say when the fold of peritoneum is connecting two organs it is known as a ligament so this will be a gastrosplenic ligament all right it will connect the stomach with the spleen makes sense and the dorsal part will be forming the lenorenal ligament finally the cranial most part of the dorsal mesogastrium it is what will become in the future the gastrophrenic ligament all right connecting your stomach to the diaphragm so all of these things eventually start growing and they start forming what our gut looks like right now so all of these things have to basically uh, undergo specializations that is what happens to the foregut what is the story for the midgut and the hindgut both of these also have mesenteries mesenteries of these two layers will basically form the mesentery of your jejunum ileum the meso appendix will be formed by them transverse meso colon will be fo uh, formed by them the mesentery of the sigmoid colon will be formed by them however in some derivatives this mesentery will be deprived some organs will not have this mesentery so in for instance this is the duodenum it will not have a mesentery it will only be covered partly by your peritoneum so these are the organs that will be retroperitoneal so in case of digestive tract these organs are the duodenum the ascending colon the descending colon and the rectum all right these all had a mesentery in the embryo embryologic life however as those uh, gut derivatives grew in size and took their eventual place these lost their mesenteries so these organs can also be known as secondary retroperitoneal organs which means once upon a time they were intraperitoneal however when the embryologic life had ended these became retroperitoneal organs that is what you call the secondary retroperitoneal organs all right and what are the primary retroperitoneal organs that never had a mesentery they were always retroperitoneal so in those organ included are included the ones we talked about the ureter the kidney so now i'm just going to give you a visual representation of how everything is placed in your abdomen so excuse the usage of these very odd objects so let's talk about the embryo this is the posterior abdominal wall this is the anterior abdominal wall what happens is your posterior abdominal wall is giving a fold of peritoneum and it's suspending your stomach the fold behind the stomach is known as the dorsal mesogastrium and the fold in front of it is known as the ventral mesogastrium all right so what happens is the liver starts to develop in the ventral mesogastrium right here so now the ventral mesogastrium is divided into an anterior part and a posterior part the anterior part will be known as the which will be eventually get derived to form the ligaments of the liver that are connecting it to the anterior abdominal wall and between the liver and your stomach lie what you call the lesser omentum all right eventually the stomach gets turned and you know it gets to its normal place the lesser omentum will be like this literally like suppose this is the stomach of your body right now it's going to be like this this will be the lesser omentum and from the stomach below there will be this great layer undergoing fold of the peritoneum this was the dorsal mesogastrium its caudal part you can say this has become your greater omentum so just like that the stomach has a lesser omentum and a greater omentum suspended from it the lesser is from the lesser curvature whereas the greater is from the greater curvature all right i hope that makes sense that was all you needed to know about the introduction into the peritoneum in the next video we will go into more depth about the various 
omentums in the upcoming videos this will make even more sense do not forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching